Hi, everybody. My name is Ivan Lavandera from the University of Oviedo in Spain. And I welcome you to module 2.2 from the advanced unit called Retrosynthesis. I hope you will enjoy it. When designing a synthetic route, this can be done in a linear manner. This is starting from a possible precursor and moving forward through different intermediates until the final product is obtained or can be made by a retrosynthesis, concept introduced by Professor Corey last century, which starts from the target product and goes back step by step until suitable starting materials are found. Obviously, after doing this analysis, we can find many different pathways to obtain the desired compound by using different precursors. So the next question is, which one is going to be my best option? The answer to this question can be found based on different parameters, such as the number of synthetic operational steps that will define time and energy needed in the synthetic approach, the commercial availability of starting materials, catalysts and solvents used, which will also account for the economic impact of our approach, the productivity and selectivity for each step based on yields and enantio or diastereomeric excess values, the activity and stability of catalyst employed or equipment needed. Moreover, in the last decades, the environmental impact of our synthetic route must be carefully assessed. In this context, biocatalysis, which operates under mild and safe reaction conditions, can play an important role. While desirable, every synthetic step might not be biocatalytic, as enzymatic reactions still show some limitations, especially at large scale. In fact, excellent examples of multi-enzymatic cascades will be shown in module 2.4 of this unit. However, the tendency in the last years is that at least one of the crucial steps in retrosynthetic pathways is done mediated by enzymes, as will be also demonstrated in module 2.3 of this unit related with the design of chemoenzymatic cascades. To perform a correct retrosynthetic analysis, it is necessary to recognize the different functional groups that are present in our target molecule, so then possible precursors can be envisaged. Apart from this, it is also very important to know the different methodological approaches that can be used with enzymes, especially if stereoselective processes are involved, as it has been shown in module 2.2 from the basic unit. To show the different biocatalytic possibilities to get access to valuable compounds, in this slide as an example, the synthesis of chiral alcohol derivatives from many different precursors is demonstrated. Thus, when starting from a racemic alcohol, the natiopure derivative can be obtained through kinetic resolution using a hydrolase, an, an acylating agent, or an alcohol oxidase. If the precursor is a ketone, an alcohol dehydrogenase can be employed as catalyst by a desimetrization, as in the case of alkenes with deoxygenases or alkanes with monoxygenases or peroxygenases. Also, racemic epoxides can be resolved in the presence of epoxide hydrolases. To get access to chiral amines, there are also many different biocatalytic possibilities depending on the substrate. Starting from racemic derivatives, they can also be solved through kinetic resolution using hydrolases or amine oxidases by a reductive amination from the corresponding prochiral ketone precursors by transaminases, amine dehydrogenases, or imine reductases, starting from alkenes with unemployed ammonia lyases, or activating alkyl or aromatic positions by using engineered monoxygenases and picted spenglerases, respectively. Thus, having in mind 
the different biocatalytic possibilities that can be applied, we will be able to design efficient retrosynthetic approaches that's generating transformations that are not possible in just one single step. For instance, we will be able to combine two biocatalytic biocatalytic steps to transform racemic alcohols into chiral amines by merging two different oxidal reductases, or three steps to synthesize chiral nitrogenated heterocycles from keto acids through the combination of two different oxidal reductases and one transferase or we can plan retrosynthesis involving even more biocatalytic steps. In fact, some computational tools are nowadays being designed to help, to help us to create possible biocatalytic retrosynthetic approaches to obtain a desired target. As a summary, the development of retrosynthetic analysis is highly important as it will lead to the design of new cascade multi-enzymatic or chemoenzymatic approaches. It can also guide to the search of novel enzymatic activities or biocatalysts with improved properties, which, of course, can be attained through reaction and enzyme engineering. Different parameters have to be carefully assessed when designing biocatalytic retrosynthetic routes, such as enzyme activity and stability, substrate loading accepted by, your body, by the catalyst, the requirement of a cofactor recycling system, and the possibility to immobilize the enzyme, what can largely enhance the process productivity. So I hope to have shown you the relevance of retrosynthesis, especially in enzymatic processes, which will impact the, synthesis, the synthetic applicability of biocatalysis. See you.